Would it be okay that in the next 45 minutes um, I shared with you what I believe is crucial information to help people in their life? If people really have any goals, dreams, ambitions, anything in their life, that this is the information that I really feel they need to hear. Would that be okay with you? Yeah. Okay, because if it isn't, I'm sorry, because <laughs> I'm going to speak anyway. So the presentation is called How to Create Our Fantastic Future. How to Create Our Fantastic Future. And I really want to give you three things. I want to give you some information that could seriously help you create the future that you want. I also then want to show you how to overcome the biggest obstacle that you're probably going to face. And I also want to show you how to be a genius. Is anyone interested in any of those three things? Right? Especially if you didn't actually have to do anything. It's like, if you think of anything you want in your life, how many of you would like to be fitter and healthier and have more energy? Just put your hand up. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is put your hand up. Okay, so some people aren't putting their hands up. If all you have to do is say, yep, please. I want energy, I want a six pack, I want an eight pack, I want a 12 pack, I want to be stronger, I want more energy, I want my back pain to go, I want my blood pressure to come down. All you've got to do is just put your hand up and tell me. That's all you've got to do, right? Put your hand up. So some people aren't putting their hands up, so you don't want any of that, no? Okay, that's fine because you can't make people do anything. It's entirely up to you. How many of you would like me to wave my magic wand so you could have the health and energy that you want, or how many of you would say, no, I don't want you to do it for me, but I want to do it myself? Would anyone want that? Because a few of you. <laughs> because ultimately, what's really interesting about human beings are, well, you help me. Human beings are, help me. Human beings are... Change adverse. Ch change adverse. They don't like change. Human beings are... Sorry, you can feel really self-conscious if you want. Human beings are... Human beings are... Human, human beings are... Help me out here, okay? <laughs> human beings are... Amazing. Amazing human beings are... Unique. Sorry, unique. Lazy. Lazy human beings are... Lazy. Lazy. You could pretty much say any word about human beings, and you could say that they are, right? Someone said amazing. Does anyone know where the word amazing comes from, by the way, just out of curiosity? The word amazing. Okay, it comes from Henry VIII, right? That era where one of the games they played for fun was mazes. You know those mazes? Those mazes, you know, that you kind of get lost in a maze? Guess what it was when you came out of the maze? It was amazing that you had found a solution to a problem that you had. So I want to talk to you about the future. What is the future? Does anyone know what the future is? What does the word future mean? If you go and Google the word future, what do you think it might say? Shout it out, anyone. The unknown. The unknown? To happen. To happen. OK, if you go and Google the word in the dictionary, the word future means what is going to come, what is going to happen. So if I asked you, what is your relationship to the future, what would you say? By the way, I'm going to ask lots of questions that will challenge you and you might not know the answer to. Who's ready for another question? Here's a really great question. What will be the greatest thing that you ever do in your life? Not what you've done, what will be the greatest thing that you ever do? So I'm gonna come back to that question in a minute. The last time I was here was in 1999. I was the sports psychologist to the Kent cricket team. Now, I'm one of those weird people, right? I like cricket, right? But most people, they, it's like Marmite. They either like it or they hate it, yes? And I was here in 1999, and the coach of the cricket team was a guy called John Wright, who was from New Zealand, and he used to open the batting for New Zealand in a time when, when you played cricket, a lot of people didn't wear helmets, and the West Indian cricket team was the greatest team. They really wanted to hurt you and then they wanted to get you out. And I was always fascinated by what type of a mindset would someone have to have knowing that really what they were doing could have a massive impact on the result of the game and the fact that they actually could get hurt. And I never forget, I was so excited about working with a professional team because I like sport, but I was never good enough to play at the highest level. I was always, wow, I'm so excited. I remember the first day walking into the Kent dressing room going, yes! I'm so pleased to be here in my head. I didn't say that out loud because they would think I'm mad, like many of you probably already think I'm mad, but that's okay. 
I remember teaching aerobics. Anyone here ever done aerobics? Most of you have. I remember teaching aerobics in 1989 with a headset on like this, right? With a few hundred people in a room, and I'd be doing this, right? No one else would be doing that. People would be doing this. But if I'd been doing this, people would be doing this. Because human beings are, human beings are very reluctant to, to get stuck in. Human beings are very frightened of stepping out of what is familiar to them. Human beings are, human beings are amazing, but what's amazing about human beings is human beings can come up with ideas. What's the greatest thing you've ever done? When we look at what, you've, what you could do, well, we'll look at that in a moment, but let's look at what you've done. What have you done in your life where you had an idea, and with the idea, you made something happen? Has anyone done that in this room? You had an idea about something, and with the idea, you actually brought something to life. Isn't that pretty amazing that human beings, we have that capability, yes? Help me out here. <laughs> we have that ability, and yet you could all come up with an idea, but yet I looked at that, I thought, wow, there's now two on the board. But then I realized one of them said, bright idea. So maybe that is a good idea, that we could all have bright ideas. If we say what human beings are, human beings are very self-conscious, yes? Because if I said, if I came up to some of you, you'd probably feel, right, self-conscious. Which means, when someone's being self-conscious, they're talking to themselves. No, don't, don't worry about it. What's the first sign of madness? No, it's sugs. <laughs> Appearing on stage. Who's sugs? Who's sugs? Madness. She got it! Sugs is the lead singer of the group Madness. What's the first sign of madness? Sugs appearing on stage. What's the second sign of madness? <laughs> Having hairs on the palm of your hands. That's the third sign. Looking. She looked. Am I mad? The fourth sign is talking to yourself. So let's be honest. Let's be honest. We've all got a problem in here because none of you are listening to me. You're not. It's okay. Don't worry. But let's face it. You're all talking to yourself. How's that working out for you? What are you saying to yourself? If I said, hey, everyone, stand up. Don't stand up. But if I said, everyone, stand up. In fact, no, everybody stand up. Stand up. Go on, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. No, no, sit down, sit down. You can feel the resistance. The resistance in you. The way, I don't want to stand up. I don't want to stand up. You know what? Because I'm comfortable. This is where I am. When we look at the one thing that everybody needs to overcome, remember we're talking about three things. What are those three things? Do you remember what the first thing was? No, don't worry about it. What was the first thing? I said we're going to do three things. Anyone know what the first thing was? No, you weren't listening. It's okay, don't worry. I said we're going to talk about how to create your fantastic future. The presentation is called How to Create Our Fantastic Future in this business. That's the first thing, your fantastic future. Then we were going to say... What's the big thing that gets in your way? What's the obstacle? Well, I'd say it was you and your resistance. When, you, when, when your alarm went off this morning, who got out of bed immediately? Who, 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 who hit snooze? Who hit snooze once, twice, three times a lady, I love you. So the fact of the matter is, some people say, you snooze, you lose. But if you snooze more than two or three times, you'll probably be a bit like a vampire that you don't come alive until night. And the reason for that is we sleep in like 90 second, 90 minute cycles. So if you wake up and you go back to sleep again and you wake up, there's a part of you that's still asleep. Right now, they call this the graveyard shift when it comes to presenting, because right now your body is digesting what you ate. So your blood sugar levels are gonna drop. So maybe I have to work just that little bit harder to make you look at things differently. Because I'm going to ask you another question. Would that be okay? Would that be okay? Yes. yes. So we all know that we're mad because none of you are listening to me. You're talking to yourself and that's fine. But uh, here, uh, who wants a tip for living, an incredible, living a much more fulfilled life? Anyone want that? No, some people aren't interested, but some of you are. Thank you. It only takes one. The next time someone talks to you that you know, 
Imagine that you're listening to them for the first time. Now, how many of you, when I just went, said that, you went, oh, shit, my wife. <laughs> how many of I did when someone said that to me recently. I thought, if I met you for the first time, I promise you, and you were talking to me, I would give you my undivided attention. It's hard, because there's so many things going on, lots of distractions, dings and pings, and things to look at, but I honestly would do my absolute best to give you my undivided attention. Do I do that with my wife? No. So then I thought, well, I'm going to try it. I'm actually going to see whether that actually makes a difference. And she said to me after a, a few times of doing it, she goes, what do you want? <laughs> she kind of clocked on that I was doing something. But when we look at one of the greatest things we could do for any human being, surely we know that one of the greatest things we'll ever do for anyone is to give them our 100% attention. Would you not agree? It's not an easy thing to do, but why is it important? Because, I'll tell you, human beings, we crave acceptance. Human beings are very tribal. That's why, has anyone here ever felt rejection? Probably not going to put your hand up, but why, whoever has ever here felt rejection? Rejection hurts, doesn't it? You never felt rejected, but you probably have, especially if it's someone maybe that you have a relationship with. They don't want to be with you anymore, and you feel that rejection. That hurts, right? You know why it hurts? You want to know why? Is anyone curious? I'm very curious about everything. I'm a very nosy in more ways than one. The reason we want to be accepted, or the reason, sorry, rejection hurts, because we're tribal. So many thousands of years ago, our success was determined on one thing, the fact that we'd all come together. If I felt rejected, it was a good sign to wake up to make sure I don't get rejected, because I'm not going to survive on my own. It makes sense, doesn't it? So what better thing can you do for any human being than to make them feel accepted? And how good are you, genuinely, how good are you, honestly, at making someone feel heard? How good are you at actually going out of your way to make someone feel really special? Is there any room for improvement in that area? Yes or yes, right? There is room for it, but probably you won't do anything about it because human beings are, human beings are very set in their ways. So who here, set, who, who here pressed snooze more than twice today? Put your hand up if you press snooze more. Who wants to do an experiment? Put your hand up. No one. Yes! They don't even know what the experiment is, but here it is. Put your hand up again. Now you probably think, do you share a bed with someone? Are they in the room? Are you sleeping with them tonight? Yes. Yes. Okay, so what I want you to do, what's your name? Jax. Jack. Jack. So Jax, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go home. You can all do this as well if you want. When you go home tonight, go to bed before your partner and get in their side of the bed. Right? Get in their side of the bed. And Jax, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? You know, what's going to happen? He'll probably lay on me. He'll probably lay on you and think, yes! Yes! I've been waiting for this and think it's maybe their lucky night. But really what you'd probably hear is, what are you doing? That's my side. All my stuff's on that side. And probably, unless you're one of those weird people, because I know there's at least one of you in this room, who is the person in this room, when they lie down, they close their eyes, they go to sleep? Put your hand up if you are that person. How many of you look at those people and go, think, I'd love to be able to do that? How many of you would love to be able to just... There you go. Of all the things that human beings can learn to do, someone who's really good at it, like that, they don't know what they do. They just do it. And if they started to think about how they did it, they probably wouldn't sleep. But human beings can learn to be different. Here's another question for you. When do you think we get to see the best in human beings? When do you think we get to see the best in human beings? The worst times. Would you not agree? Come on, let's be honest. The way that this organisation dealt with COVID was pretty exceptional, wasn't it? Yes? Would you agree? Because in a crisis, we see people just coming together going, what do you need? How can I help you? It's one of the greatest qualities of a human being, isn't it not? But what we see in human beings is once that crisis is over, human beings go back to what they were doing before. Very few people are inspired by what is in front of them. 
and they see something that's beyond something which is happening today or tomorrow or next week, that they will never think about that. And that's what I want to explain to you. Remember, the first thing I said is how to create a fantastic future. We need to look at what your future is. But before we look at your future, you know, when we look at what MDL has done, it's 50 years, it's time to celebrate. It really is. It's time to celebrate whether you've been with the company for six weeks or six months. And I know people have been here for a Who's been here the longest? How long? Tell me. 40 years. Who is that, please? Yeah. What's your name, sir? Can we give Andy a big round of applause, please? Because... Whether we, whether we like it or not, this is a very rare thing to find now that where people will be working for organizations for a long period of time, but this organization is very clear about where it wants to go. But how did it get here? How did it get here? It's pretty obvious, right? It got here through a lot of hard work that you have done. I work with a great company called Suzuki. Ever heard of I didn't even know Suzuki did. Who drives a Suzuki car here? There you go. I love them. I think they're fantastic cars, but I didn't know anything about them until I worked for them. And uh, the managing director of Suzuki UK and Ireland has become a, a really good friend of mine. And, he, and I've worked with the company around the future, future self, helping people who work in the business see a future that they actually want to create. They can see where the company is going to be. They're the number one trusted car brand in the UK. They've got big goals, big dreams. But the challenge is for the people that work in the business to actually see that to the point where they can identify with the fact that they made this happen. If people can't see that making happen, why would they bother? Why would they bother investing in something you can't see? But look, when you look at me here, you can see the three of me. And Dale sent me this song, I, I don't know who it's by, but it's called The Three of Me. And the opening line of the song said, last night, I had a dream. The dream, there was three of me. There was the man I was, there's the man I am, and the man I want to be. And I just thought that's really fascinating because what you do when you come here and you bring that into the room, you bring your past, you bring your present, and you bring your future. But if this is the only thing that you take away from what I'm saying to you today, if this is the only thing, I'd just really appreciate you listening to what I'm about to say. How many people do you think in the world are living a future they don't want? How many people? Oh, let me make it a bit even easier for you. How many people do you think there are around the world who right now, they don't feel like doing something? And because they don't feel like doing it, they're not going to do it. How many people? Lots. Someone doesn't feel like getting out of bed, so they won't, until they have to, until their bladder starts hurting them. How many people feel like exercising? How many people feel like telling someone, I love you, but they don't do it because they don't feel like it, right? This is what separates us from all other animals, really, is that we have a choice. We, don't we? Isn't that the most amazing thing about us? We have choices. But I think most people are today are making choices that are going to lead to a future they don't want. It's called a default future. In America, 97.3% of Americans are unhealthy by four basic measures. 97.3%. How many of those people will end up in a place thinking, this is not how I wanted this thing to turn out? A lot of them, right? Would you not agree? I might be wrong. This is just my opinion. And I never used to look at the future in the way I look at it now. But circumstances, and it took my wife not being given very long to live, that really fundamentally helped me to start looking in the future in a different way. So please, pay attention to this. If I said to all of you, what are you doing tonight? Don't worry, I'm not asking you out on a date, I'm married. But what are you doing tonight? What's your name? Lauren. Lauren, what are you doing tonight? I am taking my dog to agility. <laughs> you're taking your dog to agility. How do you know you're doing that? Because it's planned in. <laughs> no, because you can see it. Yeah. Listen, I work, I, I'm so gutted that I didn't see Graham Gooch last year. I love, as you know, I love cricket. When I was a kid, I had a little card of Graham Gooch in my wallet because I wore these cricket boots called Cotton Oxfords. Anyway, that's another story. But I work with the England blind cricket team. I didn't, I was ignorant. I didn't know how blind people see. Do blind people see? 
Or they're walking down the street with a stick going, I, I'm just going to hit the stick on the ground. I've got no idea where I'm going. I'm just going to hit this because I've got nothing else to do. Or is the stick making a visual representation of where they are? Can blind people see? When they're playing cricket, are they holding the cricket back going, shit, I hope I hit the ball. That's what I'm thinking. I have no idea because I was too embarrassed to kind of ask a blind person, how do you see? They do see. They see in a different way to us. The ball makes a sound. And from the sound the ball makes, they make a visual representation of where the ball is. Can the blind people see? Of course they can. You know what you're doing this evening because it already exists in your mind. How many of you know tonight it's going to get messy? You already know that you're going to wake up tomorrow with a hangover. You know it, don't you? You're already there. What are you doing this weekend? Most people know because we have an idea of what that is. It already exists. We have, listen to this, right? Human beings, two million years ago, our brain weighed about one pound, and a, one pound and a quarter ounce. Now our brains weigh over three pounds. It's a better piece of equipment, and it has upgrades, things that we can do with this. How many of you, you, you could put your hand up and just, you could say, I mismanage myself. Put your hand up. You've never mismanaged yourself. We've all done it. But every single one of us mismanages ourselves. So let me ask you, are you making the most of what you've got? Probably not. Would you agree? Is there, who's seen Rocky Bow? But who's seen Rocky 1, Rocky 2, Rocky 3, Rocky 4? I, I saw him being interviewed the other day and he was asked to give a score for Rocky 5 and he said zero. Rocky 1, he said 10. Rocky 2, 8. Rocky 3, he said a 9. But listen, whether you like it or not, this is a movie. We are in this movie right now. Our lives have just connected. This business is a movie. The fact that it's got to 50 years and it's had the success, you, whether you like it or not, and I don't think many people do, they just want to stay where they are. Is what got us here going to get us there? I'd say no. I would say no. I'd say some of what got you here is going to get you there. But what's it really going to take to get you there? That if we were here in 365 days, what's different? Are you different? Had you made a conscious decision to be different, or did you just want to carry on doing exactly what you were doing before? Getting out of bed on the same side, sleeping on the same side, doing exactly what you were doing before, or is there room for improvement? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not you. Can you be bothered? Is it worth it? Because human beings, we always think, what's in it for me? Why should I bother? Why should I change? You change. Everyone do this for me. Cross your arms. Just cross your arms. Your arms are crossed. Keep them crossed. You don't have to cross your arms. Go on, cross your arms. I'm actually asking you to do something. It's like... How's that feel? Just cross your arms. Of course, you don't have to do it, but you can. How's that feel? Fine, normal, fantastic. Now, uncross them, cross them around the other way. How many of you just feel like this is wrong? This is wrong. How dare you? This isn't me. If you go back to the way you were before, human beings don't like change. There's a part of your brain that wants to defend, wants to defend who you were. This is the fascinating thing about human beings. Human beings are incredible, but we don't often see the incredibleness of a human being until something really bad happens. Then we change for a bit. Then we go back to what we were before because pain pushes people. It pushes people. I used to work in a gym in 1989. I became a fitness instructor. If I knew then what I knew now, if I knew then what I know now, life would be different because people joined the gym. Why did they join the gym? Why do most people join a gym? Why? They're unhealthy. <laughs> they don't feel very comfortable. Someone's told them they've got to do something about it. Not everyone. They don't want to be there. And then you reinforce the fact that they don't want to be there because you sit them down, you do an assessment, you give them the results of their assessments, and it confirms what they already know, that they're unfit and they're unhealthy. And then they come back for you then to take them around to show them these instruments of torture. They feel so self-conscious, they'll only come until they can't feel it. They, it's, just, it's just too painful. Because they don't identify with someone who is fitter, stronger, and healthier. If you don't identify with that person, it's very unlikely that it's going to happen. Does this make sense? Does this interest you at all? 
Because everything we do as human beings, everything we do is for an outcome. Everything. In psychology, for years, we used to think what drove behavior was our past. Now, our past affects us, but it's everything we do is, is governed by how we see the future. And I think most people today are living futures they don't want. How do I know that? Well, we made a documentary about happiness. And I went to a, a hospice. And I spoke to people that knew they didn't have very long left. I was very difficult. But we did it because we wanted to make a good program which kind of looked at how people were facing the inevitable. And so many of those people just said, I wish I'd done things differently. That right now, every single one of us has an opportunity, I don't know, to have a better life, to be more fulfilled, to make more of a difference. I don't really know what it is for you, but let me explain it to you like this. What was your name again, sorry? Lauren. Lauren, Lauren knows tonight, so in her mind, she can see herself going to this place with her dog. What, what's, what's your dog called? Florin. Florin. And what type of dog is Florin? Cocker Spaniel, what colour? Uh, liver. Lemon? Liver. Liver was like a brownie colour. Right, yeah. so how many of us can now visualise a dog that we've never even seen? It's amazing that we have this ability to come up with ideas. That you could come up with an idea, you could put it on that board, and that idea could become a reality. Most people, their view of the future is today, tomorrow, next week. But beyond that, for most people, they don't know that future. Why is this important? Let me ask all of you a question. At what point in your life did you wake up to the fact that life was more than just the weekend? Do you remember those days where you didn't care? You didn't care about next year. You just cared about what we're doing tonight. Where are we going? Where are we, we're going piss tonight. You're like, hey, what are we doing? Well, you're yeah, the lads, right? Yeah, Oi, where are we going? Or playing football, watching the football. That's all we were interested in. Talking about what we were going to do, where we were going to go. Well, maybe on holiday. When I get together with my friends who I grew up with, we always talk about the past. Very rarely do we talk about what we're going to do. Right? It's strange, but why don't we talk about what we're going to do? What's the greatest thing you are ever going to do? Can I make a big, bold statement? Would that be okay? Because the most valuable thing you own is your attention, right? Isn't it? But we all know now it's very hard to keep anyone's attention because everyone's attention is being sold to the highest bidder. Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok... Netflix. I know some of you think, I don't want any of that, but people's attention is being sold. So people, there's very few people in the world today that they know who they are, they know what they're doing, and get out of their way, because I'm going to do it. But yeah, I think children have that innately, but they go to school, which is a complete waste of time for most people, because you learn a whole lot of stuff that you never use. Imagine if we could teach children how to use their imagination. Imagine if we could teach children how to listen and be good human beings. There needs to be an overhaul of so many things in the world, but do you want to overhaul anything about yourself? Is there anything about yourself you think, I'd like to change that? Right? Now, if I asked a question and said, who wants to tell me something they want to change in their life? You might be thinking something, but you probably wouldn't say it because you don't want to go first, and you're concerned about what people think about you because you don't want to be rejected. You don't want to be look stupid because we don't often stop and look at the world through someone else's eyes because we know one of the biggest problems in the world right now. You know what one of the biggest problems is? I'm right, you're wrong. Isn't that one of the biggest problems? Isn't that one of the biggest problems? I'm right, you're wrong. This is the right way. And this is being forced by social media that if you look at something, watch out because more of that's coming that will help you form a view that maybe you didn't even have in the first place. But my right is actually your left. Did you know that? My right is your left. So as we look to each other, this is my right, that's your left. Imagine if we all just stopped and been really curious about how do you see the world? How can I get the best out of you? What do you want? Because how many of us, we know that we're on this earth, we know, because we, we've got to a certain age, that we know the only reason we're here is to make the life, other people's lives better. You've already got to that. How old are you? 41. So do you already know that, right? You've probably got to realize it's not about, look at me, look what I've got. It's more about, what can I do for you? How can I help you? Do you need anything? Does anyone here need anything? So when Gandhi, a pay rise. So when Gandhi said, when Gandhi said this, this is what Gandhi said, apparently, I wasn't there. He said, hey, you're... I look like Gandhi. Do you? So do I. I was wondering what you were going to say there. The voice, the voice in my head was going, what is this man about to say? 
Is he about to say we're in the same club? I don't know. But do you know what Gandhi said? Anyone know what Gandhi said? He said a few things. He said, be, here's what he said. He said, be the change that you want to see in the world. So this is this guy called Gandhi. He's from India. He goes to the UK. <coughs> Excuse me. He studies law. His first case, he gets humiliated. He's not very happy. He goes to India. Sorry, he goes to South Africa to find himself. So he's on a train in South Africa, and a ticket inspector comes up to him and says, you can't sit there. And he went, what do you mean? You can't sit here because you're Indian, and this is a white-only section of the train. We have the black-only section, we have the coloured-only section, and we have the Indian-only section. That is the section that you need to go in right now. Right? He wasn't very happy about that, and it lit a fire in him that never went out. He reinvented himself. He became someone who was completely different to the person that he was. How many of you, you are exactly the same? If I opened the door now and said, what's your name? Derek. Derek, Derek, listen, Derek, I've got someone who wants to see you, Derek. Derek, it's you. 30 years ago, come on in, Derek, 30 years ago. Derek, meet Derek. When you look at Derek, what's different? What's different about that Derek to this Derek? Can I have the microphone? Yeah? Oui. Yes, Derek. Oh, it's changed so much. Why? What's different? I know he's probably had different colour hair. <laughs> what else? Changed his outlook and everything. He's changed his outlook. Yeah. So this Derek is wiser. Yeah. Yeah, more courageous, more experienced. Yeah, more outgoing, yeah, more confident. In lots Doesn't of give a toss what other people no, think. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. What would you say to that Derek if you could go back in time? Uh, I'd say come along quicker. You know. Yeah. yeah. Thank, can we give Derek a big round of applause? Please? Derek just met previous Derek. <laughs> What's that got to do with anything? There is a fascinating TED talk. There's a fascinating TED talk. It's called Why We Do What We Do. And there's a professor, Daniel Gilbert, and he talks about human beings. They don't realize what they've done. If, if we all stopped and you got a pen and paper and you wrote down on the piece of paper everything you've done in your life that you've achieved, right, everything you've achieved, all the jobs you've done, the people you've helped, the things you've done, yes? The people you've been there for. That list would be pretty conclusive, wouldn't it? It'd be, it'd be, it would be quite epic if you actually stopped. But human beings, we tend to sell ourselves a little bit short. Human beings, we don't tend to put our hands up and say, look at me, I'm fantastic, I'm great. If anyone does that, you think you're an idiot. But let's face it, you've done a lot in your life, yes? Yes? Help me out here. How did you get this job? Why are you still in this job? Why are you a father, a mother? There's something about you. You've done some amazing things. You're not sat on your ass doing nothing. There's something about you. Let me put it to you like this. Who wants a holiday? Just put your hand up. You want a holiday? Okay, how long do you want? You can have as long as you want. How long? How long? Forever. Okay, fine. It's called retirement. Right? But then who invented retirement? It was invented in Germany and Prussia, 1859. Why? Too many people, not enough jobs. They thought, hang on a second. Okay, when did people die? Um, it was 67, average life expectancy. I know. Retirement, 65. Work till you're 65. Who invented work? The Romans. Why? To get people to do the stuff that they didn't want to do. You have a choice. This is your choice, this job. Yes or no? Or has someone put a gun to your head and said, you've got to do this job? No, you, this is your choice. It's actually your choice. But if you stopped, and you actually, and most people would say, I want a holiday for two or three weeks. Because after two weeks, most people would get itchy feet. Itchy feet for what? Come on. Itchy feet for what? Sense of achievement. You've got to do something. You're creative, right? That's what human beings do. We're only here because someone created this life for you, who worked hard for you in most cases, they did stuff for you. The difference between us and us years ago is they had to survive. They just had to survive. It wasn't about thriving. The things that you can do that people couldn't do are completely different things. But what will you do? What will you do with what you've got? Or is it all downhill from here? These should be the greatest years of your life because you've got all of this experience, you've got all of this wisdom that you can pass on to other people to help other people. But the, the first point, okay, because don't worry, I'm not going to talk forever. I know some of you, maybe you've heard enough, but maybe some of you are thinking, this is interesting. I've never thought of it like that. Because human beings don't tell, don't change when we're told what to do. If I said to all of you, tidy your room, 
How many of you go, cough? <laughs> because you don't want to tidy your room. People don't want to be told what to do. Because there's a rebel in all of you. There's a part of you that wants to rebel. That part of you rebelled when I asked you to stand up. There's a part of you that went, I'm not standing up. Who's this person telling me to stand up? I'm going to stay, stay, keep telling myself the same old story. Gandhi, he reinvented himself. He decided to become a different human being. When you look back at your life, you can see that you've achieved so much. And this is what this professor talks about. He says, when human beings wake up to what they've done, it wakes them up and goes, hang on a second. I've actually done quite a lot. But even when they wake up to that, they massively underestimate what are they going to do. What are you going to do? For, let's not talk personally, let's talk professionally. How many of you are so committed to take MDL to a place it hasn't been before? Now, if you don't put your hands up, you know, how many of you, you're committed, you want to, you want to be a part of it. You want to be a part of where it's going. You want to be here this time next year, and the business has evolved. How did it evolve? I'd say it's because you decided to do something that maybe you're currently not doing, and you decided to stop doing something that doesn't serve you, like moaning, complaining, blaming. None of you do that, right? You know, to the greatest thing I think that any human being will do is to reinvent themselves. If you want to reinvent yourself, would you not agree that the greatest thing you're ever going to do is going to be the person that you're going to become? But most people don't know that person, so they don't have empathy for it. Why exercise? Why meditate? Why, why invest in anything if you don't see where it's going? In psychology, there's a term, it's called the empathy gap. And all it means is you can't have empathy for someone you don't know. Can you? It's very hard, isn't it? Now, I could tell you the story of my wife who, uh, 13 years ago, was given 18 months to live. 13 years ago, 18 months to live. Now, I'm very lucky that I had two great parents who aren't here anymore. But my dad always said, son, it's not what you know, it's who you know. My dad was a Rotarian. My dad, when he died, there were so many people there, and they all said the same thing. He had time for everybody. So guess what? If I get to meet you, I'll be more interested in you than you're probably interested in me because I was hypnotized. Who here has never been hypnotized? Put your hand up. What do beans mean? Pringles, once you pop. You think you've never been hypnotized? Beans, they mean Heinz, if you didn't know that. And Pringles, once you... A Mars a day, does it, really? A finger of fudge? It's just enough to give you... Those of you... Ham, happiness, what's, ham, what's happiness? You know what happiness is. It's a cigar. Oh, there, you yeah, there you go. It's a cigar called Hamlet. That we are constantly influencing it ourselves by what we say to ourselves. Now, for me, I was always, I don't know if I'm like many other people, but for many other people in my life, sorry, in my life, I was very insecure. I didn't think I was good enough. I was trying to prove myself to the world. So I proved myself by writing books, being on TV, and then people would say nice things about me, but I, it didn't make me feel more secure about myself. I still felt insecure, but it took my wife not being given very long to live for my coach, who was alive at the time, who said this. He said, find people that are still alive with the same brain tumor and find out why. I never would have thought of that. Honestly, I was in fear. But it was the next thing he said. He said, ask her what she's going to do when she gets better. I said, what do you mean? She's been given 18 months. And he went, so what? People defy the odds all the time. Has anyone here defied the odds? Just put your hand up. Okay, look around. Put your hand, stand up if you've defied the odds. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you why or how. Just stand up if you think you've defied the odds. Stand up. Please stand up, sir. Someone else at the back there, you, you put your hand up. Someone else. Okay, two people. Okay, how many of you right now, with those people that have stood up, you want to know? How many of you? Maybe, maybe you think, I don't care. But how many of you go, he, how, what do you, how did you defy the odds? Well, guess what? You could probably speak to them tonight and you could ask them. Because we are all in the story-making business. This business is a story. Most of us like watching stories. Why? 
Why do we like watching Rocky? Why do we like watching The Avengers? Why do we like watching Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings? Why? Because we identify with the story. What happens in the story? Someone is called to an adventure. Frodo didn't want to leave the Shire. Harry Potter didn't want to go from under the stairs. Well, he kind of did, but he didn't. He was scared. You're being called to an adventure. But you probably won't go. You're probably going to just bring who you are today. Every day you'll come to work and you'll just be, hey, this is me. This is me. This is, this is who I am. This is what I do. I don't do that. I don't do this. You'll just be who you are. And if that's who you want to be, that's absolutely your choice. Of course it's your choice. A, a, this is what we see. It's called discretionary effort. That people just put in just enough because they don't see the benefit of a future that is beyond where they are. Does that make sense? Do you want me to give you a few examples of this? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, who knows who that is? Matthew McGonaghy won the Best Actor in 2013. Right? If you have not seen the Oscar-winning speech... By the way, this was given to me by the editor of Psychologies magazine. Her name was Susie Greaves. When she got to 50, she changed her name to Susie Walker. Why? She loves Star Wars. Now that might seem strange to you, but she wanted to reinvent herself. If you listen to his Oscar speech, listen to what he says at the end. He says, lastly, I want to thank my hero. And he talks about when he was 15 years old, that a very important person came up to him and said, who's your hero? And he said, I don't know, I need to think about it. He saw that person again, two weeks later, and the person said, so who's your hero? And he goes, I've thought about it. It's me, 10 years in the future. And then he saw the person 10 years later, and the person said, so are you your hero yet? And he went, no, not even close. He said, this is who I'm pursuing. Stephen Bartlett was someone who I introduced at an event. How many of you know who Stephen Bartlett is? When I, when I introduced him, he said something that was so profound to me. He said, when he was 15, he said, I knew who I was pursuing. When he was 15, he said the biggest risk would have been to stay doing what everyone else was doing. He told his mum, I'm leaving university and I'm starting a business. His mum said, if you do that, I won't talk to you again. He didn't talk to his mum for two years. He took a risk. He reinvented himself. And one of the greatest examples is this. How many of you know who that is? Or at least your children know who that is. That's Mr. Beast. He's the most successful YouTuber in the world. Seven years ago, he had 8,000 subscribers on YouTube. Go and see how many he's got now. How did he do it? He made four videos, and in those videos, he's talking to his future self. And he scheduled the videos to go out, and the third video has gone out. He's now got over, over 100 million. So I've still got some time because I gave myself some leeway. Does this make sense? What's the greatest thing you'll ever do? I would say it's the person that you're going to become. Now, who knows who that is? Now, you're all thinking. I know what you're thinking, aren't you? Yeah, he did say I had a dream. But you know what he also said? He said the most important question we should be asking each other is this. What can I do for you? That's, he said that is the most important question. What can I do for you? I dare you to start going up to people you don't even know, strangers, and say, excuse me, what can I do for you? You probably get some very weird looks. But if you want to be like Gandhi, and Gandhi massively influenced Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King chose the path that he chose because someone else had gone first. You know, they all say about Pele, he went first. Did he really go first? Or was Pele inspired by somebody else? Who do you want to inspire? Who do you want to help? Well, maybe the first person you can help is yourself by making a decision on who you want to be. But you know what? We've all got that, haven't we? Kryptonite. You heard that story about Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor goes around to Superman's house and he sprinkles uh, kryptonite. You know, just dust. He puts it all around his house. Superman comes home. He's thinking, I'm Superman. But slowly, day after day, he starts getting a little bit more tired. He starts to, it starts to affect him. What's the kryptonite that you have? What is stopping you from being more capable than you currently are? I don't know, because I'm not you, and I apologize if this is really too full on for you, but I know what human beings are capable of. I've seen human beings do the most incredible things. Unfortunately, the most of the human beings I've seen do incredible things, they've done things because they're not in a good place. So I got nine minutes and 20 seconds. 
But don't worry, I'm not even finished after that. I know some of you are going, yeah, I want more. Some of you are going, I've had enough. So you all know who that is, right? If you don't, don't worry about it. His name's Ronnie O'Sullivan. I spent two years of my life working with him, and it was probably two of the most challenging years, but also two of the greatest years. He made an appointment to come and see me. The appointment was for two hours. He was with me for three days. It was interesting, because he wasn't in a good way. He was not in a good way. This was a long time ago. This was, this was, nearly, this was in 2003. And that's not in 2003. That's when he won the world title for the sixth time. He's now won it for the seventh. You see, you can be talented. And that annoys him when people say, you're lucky, you're talented. They just don't know the work that he's put in for years and years and years, working hard. But I never forget the conversation I had with him, which was at first, I didn't ask him what he wanted. I just let him talk because he was depressed, he was suicidal. I just let him speak. I didn't say very much. And he felt good because someone listened to him and he just wanted to be heard. On the second day, I said to him, Ronnie, what do you actually want? And it probably won't come as any surprise to you. He said, I want to win again. Because he'd only won the world title once at that point. I said, Ronnie, how would you know that you had? And guess what he had to do? He had to think about it. He had to imagine himself winning the trophy, holding the trophy. And it's then I said to him, Ronnie, that person that you see, that's not you. That's not you, otherwise you wouldn't be here. It's whether you want to become that person. You can carry on doing what you're doing, drinking, taking drugs, getting annoyed, getting frustrated, or you could reinvent yourself. And we went on a journey for two years, he won four, three tournaments back to back, which he'd never done before. Then he lost in the World Championship in the first round. He went on a bender for about four months. Then he came back, ready to change again, to go again. And then he won the world title and beat Graham Dot the second year I'd worked with him. Then after that, he stopped listening to me because we became such good friends that I suggested that he go and work with someone called Dr. Stephen Peters, who's got a book called The Chimp Paradox. So we all know right now, let's wrap this up. You all know you have a future. If you want to create a future, you've got to see a future. You can do that. That takes time. I can help you with that. I have a podcast called Future Self, over 400 episodes. Three of them are with Ronnie O'Sullivan that are all specifically designed to help people see a future they want to go out and create. Because, Derek, you can see the person that you were, but you can also see the person you could be, if you want to. I believe your future self is talking to you. I know you're probably listening, but most people aren't listening to their future self. They're listening to their current... We all talk to ourselves, but do we have more than one voice in our head? When the alarm went off this morning, was there one voice saying, stay where you are, and another voice going, come on, let's go. And when you go in the gym in the morning, I was in the gym this morning, there was nobody there. How many people thought about going to the gym, but didn't go? Because a, a, a part of them won the battle, whereas another part didn't get a look in. So think about this, Pete Cohen. Who is Pete Cohen? Yeah, he's annoying... He's got a lot of energy, he's quite inspiring, blah, blah, blah. I'm like seeing you as you are, and I'm coming from your future self. I'm like a lawyer that's come from your future self saying, Oi, listen, your future self is talking to you, but you're not listening. Or you're not listening like you could do, because if you start doing what your future self was telling you, I believe your whole life would change. You don't have to believe me, but at least you can give it a go. How do we create a fantastic future? We've got to see a future that we actually want to make happen. To see the person that you could become and become that person by what you do every single day. What's the biggest obstacle? That was the second thing. The biggest obstacle to making that happen, it's called resistance. You see this? The man who won the Nobel Prize in 1937 won it for this theory. And this theory is every living cell lives for one reason, to grow and express itself fully. Everything. It might not. Every acorn that falls from the tree doesn't become an oak tree, but it has the capacity. Everything lives to express. But what's different between us and things in nature? One thing. Choice. What will most of you do? You will choose to leave here today, and that's your choice. And just be exactly who you are, and you'll probably come back here next year, and things will be better, but they'll be a lot better if you consciously choose 
to go out and carve out and create the future that you want. And that's what we're going to talk about in a little while with the next breakout session. So what's the biggest resistance? It's the resistance in your head, the part of you that says, hey, everyone, stand up. Stand up. Go on, no, stand up. Go on, stand up. No, no, just feel the resistance. Look, feel it. Don't stand up because the resistance is winning. And you're comfortable where you are, so why change? This is me. I don't want to change. That's your choice. You're always going to have that resistance. It never takes a day off. It's always there. But what's the greatest thing you'll ever do is probably move through the resistance. What was the third thing I said? It was this. How to become a genius. What is a genius? Who do you think of as a genius, by the way, apart from... Who do you think of? As who's a genius? Einstein. Einstein, yeah, who do you think of as a genius? Mozart. Mozart. If you get a few minutes today, go and Google the origin of the word genius. Where does it come from? It comes from the Greeks. And the Greeks believed that everyone was born with a genius. The word genius means the moral authority that is within every human being. You know, a good moral person, which you probably all are, if you saw someone having freaking out over there or something going wrong, the genius in you would just get up. You would act. You wouldn't possibly think too much about it. There's a genius in all of you. Would you not agree? Well, you, you can go and Google it and make work it out for yourself. It's just, who are you listening to? Is the best yet to come? Are you finished yet? Is anyone here finished? Or are you ready to show the world that there's more to you than meets the eye? I don't know, because I'm not you. But I'd love to help you because I've seen human beings do incredible things. And often those things are, seem small and insignificant, but they make the biggest difference. This is my podcast, if you like listening to podcasts. Um, any questions? What's your biggest? So what did we talk about? We talked about the future. You could see a different future. And I'll just explain this. We did some studies with people. We put them in fMRI machines where we see brain activity. We ask them to think of themselves we see a part of the brain light up. We ask them to think of a stranger, we see a different part of the brain light up. We ask people to think of themselves a year in the future, for the majority of people, over 80%, that person is a stranger. If that person's in a stranger, why would you invest in that person? You would invest in who you think you are. You have changed, but maybe now we could consciously choose to change and take MDL to a place it's not been before. And that means putting a mirror in front of you. And most people don't want that in front of them because it means being accountable for what you're doing, what's working, what's not working. Do you want to change? No one can do that for you, only you can do it. So I, I, I hope you've enjoyed this small period of time that we've spent uh, together.